it's Debbie. You're at your home, your happy place. Welcome. I just want to say thank you. All the new subscribers is a lot. I am so grateful for you pressing that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And today we are going to do a tablescape. I'm still in the red and green. Somebody in two videos ago said, where's the pink? So the pink is in the rotunda and will probably be um, partially in our bedroom. Um, and then there might be some if I do the studio. I rarely get to that. Um, but that, oh, and there'll be pink in the dining room, but not the same vintage pink I was hoping for. Um, you know, things evolve as I start decorating and I find a plate or something. That is usually the inspiration in, in one of my tablescapes is the plate. I'm doing uh, the everyday table, but it is going to be a little bit more elegant. So I'm going to say, <laughs> let's pretend you are having another couple over or maybe you're having a girl's night and there's just four of you. Of course, you could expand this for an entire dining room. I call this a very casual, it's, it's not every day though, a very casual Christmas table. And I'm gonna start with my inspiration. I picked these up at Home Goods or TJ Maxx probably a couple years ago. And they are a nice brand, it's Royal Stafford. Um, made in England and um, it's a gray green and then a not so bright red, burnt red, I'd say, with a snow scene. And all the plates are exactly the same and this is all I got. They didn't have, you know, dinner plates, even if they did and they had a picture, what's the point of buying that and then covering it up with this? So I love to layer my plates. It's just what I do. I cannot tell you, I spent hours last year. This is what I wanted on this table last year. I went with a gray plate. I had some green plates that look stunning with it, but I could only find three of them. I still think I can only find three of them. And I tried it with a white plate, and I guess I didn't have a red plate at the time. I mean, I did, but it was still in storage. So this year, I had seen these red plates as I was unpacking or something. And so when when I pulled these out of my butler's pantry, it's like, oh, I'm going to try that with red plates. And that's what happened. I thought I was just doing something for now because I wanted to go gingerbread. But I'm going to tell you, the gingerbread's going to be in the kitchen, but it's going to be only part of the kitchen. Um, I'm going to treat it very light, light-handed, I'd say, I think. Maybe it's a little moderate than light, but um, kind of like I did with uh, the sunflower. I didn't want to go overboard, but I, I would have done um, a gingerbread table, but I never found plates that really fit the bill. I did buy some plates on Amazon, and they're cute, and you'll see them in a, an upcoming video in the kitchen, but they weren't even this big. So they imagine they were about this big. So they're more of an appetizer or dessert, even small dessert size. So they weren't going to work. So this is what we're going to get started with. And if you stick around to the end, I am very excited to share an appetizer with you that is so simple. You can have the contents in your pantry and refrigerator and make literally five minutes probably, if that. Well, you have to soften your cream cheese, but you will have a appetizer that will knock everyone's socks off. So thank you for whoever it was who asked, um, can I do another cooking video? I have several I wanna do, but it's just me getting coordinated to do it. So let's get started with the table. So I have a uh, green runner uh, right now. It's in the dining room, but it is this color. So I tried that. It was okay. Um, and then I unpacked this one, 
which is like the ones I used it in the fall, but you can see these are holly berry leaves embroidered in. And these are the ones that I pick up at Home Goods and TJ Maxx under $20. Just measure for however long your table's gonna be. Um, so that was gonna be the runner. And then I decided I, I unpacked this, which is a tablecloth. Um, it's got leaves, just leaves and maybe, I don't know, olives or acorn. I can't tell, something in there. Um, so I put that on underneath because I never use a tablecloth. And you guys, I'd get back in the kitchen and I'd look in here and I'm like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It, um, it just looked old lady to me. I hate to say that because I'm an old lady, but um, I just, maybe, I, maybe the word was outdated. Maybe we don't see tablecloths that often anymore. I don't know. I mean, in a fine restaurant, you're going to see white tablecloths, but... Um, anyway, I just couldn't do it. And this is not to diss anybody who loves using their tablecloths. In the dining room, it might have been a different idea, but this is not the dining room. And this is the center of my, you know, home where we live, kitchen, family room, an entryway. So it just, not to mention, you know, I have these really pretty uh, edges on my table and I've got the table situated in this direction purposefully so that when you walk in the house, you see that. Okay, and then I tried a couple things layering. So this is the same one, not the exact same one, I had two, uh, that I used in my coffee table, which is right in that room. So I thought, well, that would be nice to have that referenced. And I like to layer these kind of things. However, so it would have left about, oh, just a barely that much. It was, it took away from the richness of what this was doing as a backdrop on the table. So this is what I'm starting with. Okay, I don't have placemats. Um, I went through three <laughs> different chargers. Um, I ended up with this, which I've used before. You've seen it. This is wood. Um, these are uh, old Pier 1 ones that I know I got a decorator discount when I bought them, but they were $19 a piece. And that's before the discount. So I have a huge investment in Pier 1. I had, a, I had a huge investment in Pier 1. Let's just put it that way. But in chargers. And really, I've never seen anybody make quality chargers. I mean, you can. it's nice to be able to buy them for $1.99 or whatever. The plastic ones, they have the appearance. But once people sit down at your table, it's really nice to have something substantial. And this is wood and it's brush painted and it's gorgeous. <clears throat> and here's my plate. I love the detail in here. And I did not buy a whole set, evidently. I just bought the plates because I've never run across it. It does say it's Jacqueline Smith today. So who would have carried Jacqueline Smith? Probably Target back in the day. I don't think Target carries pretty plates anymore, but I haven't been in a Target in probably a year, so I don't know. Anyway, here we go. I'm gonna pop out these plates.
But this one is, um, looks like an antique gold on it. And it's a, a, and then a burnt red. I mean, I've had these for so many years, you guys. It says Hampton on the background. I can't, uh, on the, it's printed on the fork. I can't tell what it says underneath that, but. Um, so these are kind of just fun. I used to buy, I mean, because they had stuff. I have a whole winter collection of this type of thing. I have some that, I don't know if they've still got the liquid in them, but they um, had, they were blue and they had liquid in them with snow. <laughs> so I've had a lot of fun with my table settings over the years, but these are going to look great on the set. At this point, you could make this an everyday table. I think what's gonna change it for me is that I'm gonna bring in some crystal. But if you wanted to stay more everyday, you would just use your more everyday glasses, which I had down at first, and then I thought, you know, it's, I just wanna take it up and make it special. Uh, we have some neighbors that we're hoping to have over soon, and it'll just be the four of us. And I'm not going to sit them in a dining room for four people, but I'd like it to be a little special. So this is kind of what I'm thinking about when I'm putting this tablescape together. These are long champs. Um, golly, I mean, years ago, this was the standard. You bought them at Dillard's. Again, I got mine at Target. And then once TJ Maxx came along, you could probably find them there. So, um, and maybe I bet you now you can find them on Amazon. So if that's true, I'll link them. They're very inexpensive and they give you a really nice, you know, festive, more formal look to your table. I'm just doing a wine, very small wine and water goblet. When I started filming tablescapes a year ago, or maybe I've done it longer, but it was a year ago when I started getting a substantial number of viewers that um, I had, I think it was just one person who would repeatedly tell me that I was setting my table wrong. And so I always want you to know that I'm filming on a phone. So when I'm filming it this way, everything is in reverse. So. If you could see right now the table, you're gonna go, oh, she's got her forks on the wrong side. She's got her spoons on the wrong side. The glasses are on the wrong side. But then I take it and I take my phone down and I give you a close up. That is the correct side. That's why when you see a lot of my pictures or something else I'm holding up with writing, it's backwards. Um, I do have a great camera that I could use, but it's just a learning curve and it's probably another whole step in the process. And this is so simple. So I hope that you indulge me in being able to get a video up because this is Friday morning. I'm filming this and it's for today. And I don't think I could pull that off with the um, camera. <laughs> so, okay, let's get back to napkins. So these I unpacked and uh, yeah, speaking of writing, so these say Merry Christmas all over them, and they have a really pretty edge. I cannot tell you where I got them. I used to get an awful lot of these really cute napkins at Pier 1, so I'm thinking that's where they're from. This would look stunning alone, but again, Pier 1 taught me to layer. And so I started, you've seen me layer my napkins before. This is also probably from them. I know it is, but let's look. There's a, there's a little label. Home, at home, no, home. Well, I don't know. You guys may know that tag. I'm thinking that might be a Target one, but I can't ever remember buying 
napkins at Target. So this is really moss green, which is really the color of my honeydew melon candles, of my pillows in my family room. Um, so it's really special that I'm being able to, you know, I thought it was all hunter green or super dark green, and there will be some of that in there, but the moss green is actually the decorative thing that I've been using. So normally I will layer this like over, or I put this one on and have this peeking out, but I tried those and I wasn't thrilled. So here's what I do as far as this, I like make it a little, I put my finger in the middle and make it like a little ghost, I guess, if you were. <laughs> and now I'm going to put these two together and I'm actually going to let the green one, I'm going to do it so that the green one is kind of wrapping this one a little bit. Does that look? Okay. Now, I want you to see, I have a lot of really pretty Christmas napkin rings, but I saw this one in my collection, which is just an old brass one, and I thought that really complemented this. There you go. So that's, I'm going with this one. Simply going to pop it over. Okay, and you can play with it. I, I just kind of wanted this like in a little hood. Um, so I did all this and it still was just meh. And I started, I was really struggling with, I always struggle with my centerpieces, mainly because I don't want some big thing in there that people can't see over or see through. <laughs> um, so anyway, I ended up um, buying some bells because I was working on, I actually, and I'll, I'll tell you this later or show it to you another time, but I told you I would, had been hunting all over for a garland for the fireplace that would match the wreaths and that. And I had gone back to Michael's where I had bought those wreaths and there was something so similar that I bought it and tried it and uh, but it didn't have the bells on so I picked up some bells at uh, Hobby Lobby and it was like yeah these are too small I don't want that so as I they were laying on the table and I'm like ah uh, this looks really cute together so I am going to pop these over um, I think I'd be better off cutting this and tying it, but for today's video, I'm not gonna do that. I wanna bring it down. Each of the bells say something different. Well, not each, there's three sayings. So there's Noel, peace, and joy. And they have the little stars. So, you know, I am trying really hard to, um, it's, it's accidental but I'm mirroring a lot of things from room to room. Okay, let's put these down. I'll get you closer for this. When you do it like this, you always have the option of saying that's, you know, a, a party favor or a little Christmas token to remember the night by. And you can send your guest home with a little ornament for their tree or who knows what they might, other things they might do with it. All right, let me get the rest of these and set them out. Next, I found this in my stash. Um, oh, it says Kohl's. I don't shop there very often. I think it had a ring around it, um, but I took it off this morning. And then this went with it. Really pretty piece. 
I decided to put this down to break up the um, square of this. I don't know why, but I liked it. And you'll see when I'm done that it actually has a, it had a purpose. They are the Honeydew Melon Pillar Candle, and they are perfectly moss green. So I love that. So it's going in the center. Okay, so here's where we're at right now. Um, if I weren't doing anything else, uh, I would not have that plate there because... It doesn't look good, but I am. You know, I sat with this for a while. First of all, I sat with this with no um, little ornament, and it was just a little plain. And I had the everyday glasses, and it was just a little plain. I added um, two little uh, poinsettia plants on either side, but they had a really white vase and it just wasn't the look I was going for and when I got to Michael's yesterday uh, by the way it was the beginning of their 40% off of all of their Christmas stuff I found um, a garland and so I am going to add that garland to the table all right they actually only had two of these left of my um, Michael's so people had bought them and paid full price. Um, so the U.S. price is $19.99. This is for a cedar and red berry garland that is six foot. Um, so at 40% off, I don't know exactly what that is. It's a little over $10, I suppose. So you can see it's a very wonderfully flexible. Um, the leaves are gorgeous on it. And the berries, eh, you know, what I don't like is a lot of times these berries get a little chipped up, but I suppose I could fix that myself. All right, so I bought two of them. Gonna just layer them through the top here, and then let's see what it looks like. There we go. The other one, this one looks like somebody bent it but there were only two left. I'm going to have to work on it to unbend this. It's a very sharp angle it's got on it, but the other side is not that way. And then as you can see, it. Um, I like having the white there because I just feel like it turns it more into a centerpiece. And this kind of garland worked really pretty um, going around. That yeah, somebody did something to this because even here I see another really bent piece while the other one is totally naturally, you know, it's just perfect. It's, I didn't have to play with this at all. So anyway, I think that looks really lovely, but I'm not done. All right, the very last thing I'm adding are these antique gold bells. Um, they do have some uh, cedar in them. So while they have uh, some spruce or something else in them, uh, the cedar and the berries and the antique gold really ties them in. Um, they have a front and a back, but I am going to kind of train this down to the front side and just leave the back alone. And I'm gonna put them facing the opposite way so that one side's got the front and a back, and the other side's got a front and a back.
And I just wanted to mention, because I'm not sure if I did, but you guys, I did end up getting my chairs. Um, so if you recall, I had some plain, uh, they were the same color because they came with the table, but they're just um, columns and a square back and I really didn't like them. They were also a hard seat and you know that I have, I'm not going to show them right now, my kitchen's a disaster, but I have bar stools that have this similar look to them in my kitchen and I knew that this company had these. Um, I found these on Amazon and they do have a cloth seat as you can see. And um, so I love it. They definitely take the table up a notch um, and make it, you know, it's a beautiful table. And I just couldn't understand why um, a, a table with this kind of uh, beautiful bottom on it did not have something that complemented, which now it does. So anyway, I wanted you to see that. Let's step into the kitchen and I'm gonna make you an appetizer that I think you, I'm telling you, it was unexpected how much everybody loved it at supper club. I made two, but I'm only gonna show you uh, one this time and I'll bring the other one another time. All right, this is gonna be the most simple and tastiest appetizer that you will make this season. And I'm not good at filming cooking, so I'm gonna show you my ingredients and then my face is gonna get out of the picture while I show you how fast you can make this. First of all, I love to have a great serving piece. Now, since we're gonna use something that is oblong or rectangle anyway, um, I picked this piece up at Home Goods this year. And it's, of course, wood bark and that. It's, it was perfect, it's lightweight. Um, it was probably $20 or less. Um, then I wanted, um, so I also wanted uh, some kind of server. Now I've got some really pretty Christmas ones, but this one stretches the season. I used this for October. Um, because it's just a gold mousse <laughs> and um, it came with I think four pieces so but today we're only going to use this one we're going to start with one softened what is he eight ounces I think these are now when I made it I doubled the recipe so on that I was able to bump two of them next to each other but depending on you know how many people you're serving and honestly there were only Oh, let's see, there were only six of us and this was all gone plus another one. So I'm just telling you, it's so good. Okay. Um, because when we were at the store, I found pumpkin spice caramel and I thought, okay, this sounds so good. I think they called this a caramel apple appetizer. So doesn't that sound great? And then last, so three ingredients softened cream cheese, some kind of caramel, and there's other flavors too, and some toffee bits, which Heath has already broken them up for you. Those are my three ingredients. Now I'm going to put the camera down and I'm gonna show you how simple this is. Now I'm gonna take a soup spoon. You can use anything that's got a nice, 
surface like that because I'm going to make a dipping area in here so it will hold my caramel. Now I'm gonna put my caramel inside. I need another spoon. It says limited edition on it. This is Lighthouse, by the way. Oh, that pumpkin, you can smell it. Now we're going to sprinkle some bits on top. All right, I mean, it's done. You still need to add apples, slices, or crackers, which I'll set up for you real quick here. But that was it. It was so easy, you guys. Um, I don't know if I picked this up this year or I already had it, but it was a home goods find. When I see something like this, I think of what you could put in it. This is always gonna be great for crackers. And since I want my apples right around my cream cheese. I'm going to just put my crack and pop these in. Let's see how easy that was. Okay. Apples. Just don't get a soft brand. Um, so the Granny Smiths were great. Um, I, I think I picked up Fuji and then I picked up another apple that I'd never heard of before. Um, it's the same color and I can't think of what it was and I've already taken the stickers off. So I'll cut up, I'm just gonna cut up two apples this time because I'm gonna have to save these. Nobody's here to eat this and I don't eat this. Actually, uh, actually we have a hoedown we're going to um, tomorrow afternoon and I'm going to bring this down there. So will it keep? Uh, I think it will. Cream cheese is like so resilient. It's not gonna run or anything. I just need to put either a foil or a piece of plastic over it and it's perfect. Uh, the apples, I just need to put some lemon juice on and they'll be fine too. So I can take it down and use it tomorrow. There we go. All right, let me go ahead and set these around. I did about, I want to say four apples maybe. I don't know. Can't really remember, honestly. Because um, I had them a lot tighter than this, but since I'm only going to cut up two apples for you today, I'm not going to make them as tight. So the so the presentation won't be quite the same. I think I'll keep the same direction going. Of course, you're going to want some gorgeous plates. Um, yes, these are pure one. And napkins, which I don't have any right now. Okay, I found it. It is called inspiredbycharm.com and the name of this is Cream Cheese Caramel Apple Spread and this is Michael 
And I just noticed he let his uh, drool over the sides, but he might have used a different kind of caramel. Mine's a little thicker. Maybe his is runnier. So you guys, this blog has tons of great recipes. I just saw, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to read this blog. Uh, home decor, entertaining, and holidays. Sounds like us, you guys. Well, join me over there and let's say hey to Michael. Tell him Debbie sent you, right? He doesn't know me, but... Thanks for joining me today. I had the best time. You know I love a tablescape. And I like to be a success when I go to a party and offer my appetizers. So if you make that, I would love some feedback on how it worked out for you. You know, you can always come back and comment on an old video. And when I come back this week, uh, next week, I'm going to give you my Rotunda 12 foot Christmas tree. Um, it has been a labor of love. It is not done, probably 80% done. Um, and then the rest of the week, we'll just keep plowing along. I'd appreciate a like, that also really helps my channel. And if you can share me, pin me, whatever you can do, I appreciate it. I'm gonna see you on Monday. You guys have a fabulous weekend and make your home your happy place. Mm -hmm.